in this video, we are doing a question and answer, and I asked all my audience some detailing questions. So if you're curious about car detailing and you want to know some of the answers, sit back, relax, and let's get it. Welcome to A Passion for Detailing. I hope you guys are having a great day. So I'm doing a Q&A in this video, and I asked my audience if they had any particular detailing questions they didn't know the answer to. It's absolutely freezing here in the UK. It's about minus two of when shooting this video so I apologize if you can see my breath it is absolutely freezing in the shed so I do apologize for that so the first question was is from a subscriber uh, he actually recently won the MJJC foam cannon giveaway is Alex Tricker uh, he supported my channel all the way up until now so I really appreciate all your support dude thank you so his question was how did I get into car detailing from just general car cleaning so when I was about 17 years old, I was bought my first car. It was actually a white Corsa and it was my pride and joy at that point in time. Even today, that car has so many fond memories. And I, I'll be honest with you, even, even though I've got some fast cars now and had some fast cars, I still have so many fond memories of that car. So I, at 17 years old, was out cleaning the car on a weekend, a weekday, going to car cruises and sort of learning about cars at that point in time at that age. And I was in college, I didn't really know what to do with my life and uh, a, a, a gentleman who lives up my top of my mum and dad's road, I actually know him from the fishing community and I've known him for a very, very long time. If you don't know much about myself, I do a lot of fishing in my spare time, along with doing these videos for you guys. So he actually has a valeting company. Uh, it was called um, Prestige Valeting Services. Um, valeting in the UK is the same as car detailing. It's just a different terminology. Uh, you s back 15 years ago, the word detailing didn't really exist um, here in the UK. And he offered me a job and the job was actually of all places up at Silverstone Race Circuit. I'm sure everyone's watched the MotoGP and Formula One there. And Porsche had actually just opened a humongous state-of-the-art center called the Porsche Driving Experience. And the job there was actually to wash the cars for the previous day. Um, and that's sort of what we did on a, on, a, on a daily basis. And it was just valeting. It was truck wash, wash the wheels, give the car shampoo, wash it, leather it, and move on to the next car. There was no thorough detail in that side of the job. But I learned a lot there. I was put on a two fantastic courses. I went to Autoglim here in the UK down at Letchworth and then I also went on to Maguire's uh, and I did some uh, a course there and they showed me how to machine polish, different waxes, sealants and I started to get an, an understanding of what products were good, what products were bad and that really intrigued me because I know every time I clean a car it especially when it was my own car, it was really relaxing, really rewarding. And what I liked about it is I can just switch off from everyday life, from the stress, and it really helped me unwind my mind and focus on the next job I had to do in my personal life. So that is where it all started. Um, and here I am 15 years later, and I have a YouTube channel. I still absolutely bonkers about cleaning cars and the attention to detail that, I, that came with that was thanks to that job and that opportunity down at Porsche Driving Experience. Just so you know, if you haven't ever been to the Porsche Driving Experience, it's a worldwide thing now. If you buy a Porsche, you can actually have a go on track, but also you can also go and pay for courses and learn some tips and tricks on how to drive the cars. And if you've never done it, go and check it out. I will leave the link in the description below so you guys can find it. So TM Photography asked, what product didn't live up to its hype. So I would just say today, Meguiar's overall isn't a typical brand I would go for. Um, 10 years ago, Meguiar's was a big, humongous hype. And uh, obviously I went on their training course and their products at that point were very, very good. I just don't think they've advanced enough to keep up with the competition, in my opinion. Obviously, you may have a different opinion on that. Um, please don't shoot me in the comments. That is just my personal preference. So if I was to say a brand that doesn't live up to its hype, I would probably say Meguiar's. I've used many of their products. You've probably seen in some of my videos, I have used some of the Meguiar's products. And I'll be honest with you, they don't live up to my expectation. And you don't see a huge amount of them here on my shelf anymore. So there is way more selection now from many other brands here in the UK that 
way outperform those at, from Meguiar's. I'm not sure Meguiar's, their products are very good for the normal consumer. Just, I am an absolute detailing fanatic, so they don't work for me. The other question was, what products should get more recognition? So, in my opinion, oh, I have used many products, Geon, Chemical Guys, Turtle Wax, Meguiar's, Autoglim. Um, there is one product here, or a selection of products that they produce, is PNS. Why here in the UK this brand is not spoken about way more, I do not know. PNS make some fantastic products, guys. Um, Beadmaker is still today, along with the Gion Ceramic Detailer, my favourite topper or dry and aid. There's nothing out there that gives you this amount of gloss in in this bowl. It's just such a shame because it's an American company. The products are quite expensive, but overall, PNS should get way more recognition here in the UK because I think they're absolutely fantastic. Chris W asked, what products did I start with and what are my favourite now? If I showed you what I used to use, you'd probably be horrified uh, about what I used to put on cars. Obviously, my knowledge back 15 years ago is nothing like it is today. So back then, I, there's a company in Stevenage, not far from where I, I live here in, in Bedfordshire, and it's called MC Products. I still buy some bits and pieces from them today, especially their glass cleaner. Their glass cleaner is very, very good, and it's cheap as chips. Uh, I, I used to buy all my chemicals from them. Um, it's all bulk buy, so five litre drums. Um, I used to buy traffic film remover. Uh, that's what it was called back then. Uh, it was super dilutable. It removed all the dirt all the grime it was probably no good for the paint at that point in time but that is what i used to use i used to use a uh, wheel acid for all my wheel cleaning uh, even at porsche that's what we used um i just used a general a general general gen, gen genuine genuine a genuine all-purpose style shampoo so it was um it was ph neutral it was like a wash it wasn't a wash and wax and then once we'd washed the car we would use a rinse, they called it a rinse aid. That's the company they used to call it a rinse aid. So you'd spray that on, rinse it off, it'd make the car a little bit hydrophobic. And we would use a artificial chamois back then. Do not shoot me in the comments. I don't use them now, but back then that is all we used. And you'd be actually surprised in the UK if you're not a detailer that how many people still use artificial chamois today. Not something I would use, but if you're in a, a rush and you need a speedy wash and you're cleaning 30 cars a day, a artificial chamois is the best way. Uh, it's not great for the paint, but overall, that is what most people are gonna use here. Um, you'll probably find that many hand car washers are still using those sort of products today. They're not great for the paint. So yeah, that's where I started with chemical wise. Today, obviously I have a huge selection of, of products. Um, there's way more over here, but obviously you can't see that. But um, some of my favorite products is obviously the Gion Ceramic Detailer. I absolutely love the Gion Wet Coat. That is a, a firm, firm favorite of mine. Um, I've used the uh, Auto Bright's Ceramic Magi Seal. Um, that's a very good protection product if you want something quick and easy when it's cold outside. Um, Built Hamber, all their products, I have all of, all of them. Their Auto Wash, their Touchless Pre-Wash, fantastic i can't fault it it's my favorite um snow foam um you've got um infinity wax citrus the end is the list is endless i don't have a pacific brand that i would only ever go to that one every brand has a particular product that i absolutely love and yeah i'm sure you all feel the same the next question is is a fallout remover a wheel cleaner the answer to that question is yes and no um you can buy particular wheel cleaners that does that do both. So built hand by Auto Wheel is not only does it have a fallout remover in it, it that breaks down all that brake dust that builds up over time. Gion also have one that comes in the black bottle. That is absolutely fantastic as well. And they're dedicated wheel cleaners with a fallout remover in them. I typically wouldn't go and buy Built Hamper Corosol, for example, and just use that on its own. I wouldn't do that. I would use a dedicated wheel cleaner that has that fallout built inside it. So 
I use fallout removers regularly on my own personal car and also others. It all depends on the job that you're doing. For example, if your car is cleaned on a weekly basis, you don't do very many miles on it. I'll use my Evo for example. If I'm not doing much heavy driving in that car um, and I just want to spruce the wheels up, I would just use a alkaline based detergent like PNS Brake Buster, uh, Garage Therapy One Wheel Shampoo. They are perfect for wheel cleaning. If, for example, I haven't cleaned them for a while or I've done a track day or I've done some real heavy driving, I'll be honest with you, I drive it quite hard. Um, obviously that brake dust sticks to the wheels and so I would use a fallout remover. And then if I want to apply a foam style product over the top so it lubricates the surface so you're not causing any swell scratches or marring but that's going to get all those tiny little bits of stuck to the lacquer of your wheels or the clear coat and that will help remove that so yes um, I still use fallout remover uh, as a wheel cleaner it's not something I typically would go to just on its own I buy a dedicated wheel cleaner like the Gion one or the built hamber auto wheel do I prefer sheeting or do I prefer beading I think we all sit there and agree that the beading element of a product is the most exciting part of applying a wax or a sealant or a ceramic coating. Um, the beading side of things can cause some problems, um, especially in the in hot climates. If you park next to a sprinkler, uh, especially if you've got a ceramic coating, then they're known for it. You'll get a tiny rings all over the all over the surface that are very very hard to remove. What would do I prefer? I prefer beading. Um, I like in the morning if it's been raining, the car's covered in water beads. You can see that, that there's a vi nice visual sign that the protection is still there. But sheeting's also very good as well, um, especially when you're trying to dry the car. The, the, the less water that's on the panel means that you're touching it less. So there is an argument there, beading versus sheeting. My personal choice, I prefer beading. I use a car dryer on a regular basis to, to dry my car. Um, the only downside to the beading is it can leave mineral deposits on top of the clear coat that can be very, very hard to remove. I've had a, already had a bad experience on my own personal car. I went away on holiday for a week and a half and I come back uh, my Evo had only just been ceramic coated and I, that I'd done myself using a Geon product and uh, the, I'll be honest with you, the, the minerals were so hard to remove and it actually removed the, the hydrophobic properties using a, uh, a mineral deposit remover. So please beware uh, when, you're, when you're doing this and yeah, I, I still prefer beading over sheeting but that is just my personal opinion. So. Next question was from Paul Dalden Details. If you haven't uh, seen any of these videos, I will leave the, the link for his channel in the description below. So he asked me, what are my favorite products? Paul, you're asking me an impossible question, but over the last couple of years, uh, obviously I have a huge selection from Gion. Uh, I think because I have a Gion coating, uh, I ended up going down the Gion, that Gion way of doing things. I actually quite like a lot of their products. Um, uh, there's a couple of things I wish they did, a, a proper dedicated citrus uh, pre-wash uh, and also their foam. Uh, you can't see it, it's not there. Um, their Geom foam isn't um, strong enough for, for my liking. Um, so if I was to pick a brand, I'm probably going to pick... Oh, this is tricky. I would, I'm going to go... I'm going to go Garage Therapy. This year I've used a lot of the Garage Therapy products. Um, their customer service is absolutely next to none. Their innovation on all their products are fantastic, especially their uh, Garage Therapy Decon Shampoo. You can use it for pretty much any detailing job, engine bays, wheels, interiors, everywhere. So if I'm going to pick a brand um, that isn't Gion, because that's the brand I'd probably pick, as you can tell uh, i'm going to probably pick garage therapy reason being is the thought for every single product if you haven't seen the garage therapy review i'll leave the link up here paul also asked me where does he see where do i see my youtube channel in the future so it's been an absolute tough 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 ride um i thought this youtube was going to be very very easy you watch some of these big channels Pan the organizer, John at Forensic Detailing. Um, 
uh, Ammo, NYC. They're humongous YouTube channels, just a couple to pick. And if my channel was anywhere near as them, I, I don't think what where I would be. Um, I would love my, sorry, the dogs have decided to, to, to bark. Um, my, where would I like it to be? I'll be honest with you, I, I really would love to do this permanently. Um, I would love to get sponsorships from brands, um, go out and uh, visit some of these um, manufacturers uh, and do way more product reviews um, and have a, so much fun. And my, my dream would be to actually have my own dedicated detailing unit because for me, that would be literally my dream, my dream. Um, the the love that I have for car care is out of this world. That is where I'd love to be. Um, and, you know, like Pan has got his double garage, I would do anything to have a double garage so I could bring a car inside and detail that car to the nth degree, making sure that the when I've finished with it, the customer is absolutely blown away by the result. So I would love to be able to do way more videos for you guys, get Gion, PNS to, you know, actually sponsor a video so I can do this full time and actually earn a very good living from it. That would be absolutely fantastic. And that's where I would love my channel to go. 60 seconds to Stevens asked me, what is my favorite dilutable wheel cleaner? I have a handful of products that I would use for dedicated wheel cleaning. The first one is the one I would always go to is the PNS Brake Buster. The reason I like this product is for three reasons. The first one is obviously dilutable. Uh, the second reason is you can use it in a pump sprayer, so in an IK foamer. Uh, and the second reason is not only is, sorry, my th the third reason, the third one is one that a lot of people don't realize is it has rust inhibitors in it. So what that's gonna do is if you spray any wheel cleaner on your wheel after you've cleaned the car, your brake discs are orange. And obviously if you've got black wheels or even silver wheels, you drive away and the wheels are trashed straight away. And uh, all that hard work and effort you've just put into cleaning those wheels has gone down the toilet. So. What this is going to do is that's going to real help with aiding that process. So it really helps to stop the uh, brake disc going orange, uh, but also obviously it's a wheel and a tire cleaner. So you've got a double product in one. So that would be my favorite wheel and tire product. The only downside here in the UK more than it is in America is the price of the product. But still, again, one of my favorite products for wheel and tire cleaning. Paul Brown, he asked me, where do I stand with waxes and sealants and which one would I apply first and do I double them up? So um, would I apply the sealant then the wax or the wax then the sealant? The truth is I don't agree with either one of those. Um, from my experience, I don't really like to layer products. Um, I don't think they bond to each other very, very well. Um, so in my opinion, if I'm going to I'll do a sealant for example I will apply the sealant after I've prepped the panel uh, or the other way is I would apply the wax after I've prepped the panel I don't see any benefit of layering the products um, on top of each other I don't think it achieves anything at all but that's just my personal opinion so I use an example so if you're going to use uh, the Fuso coat just here so obviously the 12 month Fuso coat, um, the durability on this is enough on its own. So as long as the paintwork has been prepped properly and it's been polished, um, and then obviously prepped with using a panel wipe, this will last up to 12 months. And the, there is no reason you need to apply a wax on top of this because this product on its own is more than enough. Or the other alternative that you have is, for example, if you're gonna use Turtle Wax Seal and Shine, this product is a standalone product so you don't need to apply something else on top of this um there is no benefit only the only time i apply something on top of that is is i'm using it as a drying aid for example if i've applied geon wax and uh, i i need to dry the vehicle after i've washed it a couple of times i would then use a a drying aid so something like pns 
bead maker or I'd use Geon wet coat just to up the hydrophobic properties of the, the protection that's already underneath. Um, I wouldn't apply a wax on top of a wax over on top of a wax or sealant wax, sealant wax, sealant wax. I wouldn't do that. Um, there is no benefit. You're wasting your time. That is just my opinion. Um, obviously, everyone's entitled to their opinion. Um, so yeah, I don't see any benefit of, of, of layering products like that. I don't think it benefit, benefits you at all. And it doesn't do anything to the paintwork in my opinion when i went to uh Maguire's, um this was 15 years ago mind um they would say the same thing um obviously if you polish the paint then you apply the protection over the, the top to protect what you've already done um they would never suggest then putting another protection product on top of that or on top of that um and they always suggest using a panel wipe um before applying any wax or sealant um, so you, you get the longest longevity you get for that product so yeah there's no benefit for, for that guys and Paul thank you for your comment there was another couple of questions uh, the next one was can I apply a wax on top of a ceramic coating so I have a ceramic coating on my car and the only wax I would apply to that would be the Geon one because they say that you, this can be applied on top of a ceramic coating I would not normally put a wax or a sealant on top of ceramic coating because you are masking the effects of the coating that you've put on there. That coating can outperform any wax, any sealant known to man. So even if you've got a two year ceramic coating is going to be way better than anything synthetic or Kanuma based that you'll find on the market today that 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 car has on it. So. I wouldn't put a wax on top of a ceramic coating. Um, if your ceramic coating has lost its hydrophobic properties, what you need to do is give the car a good decon wash. So use something like CarPro D-Scale that's a little bit acidic um, to help rejuvenate the hydrophobic properties. Or you can go the other route is something a little bit more alkaline. For example, uh, Garage Therapy Decon Shampoo is a very, very good uh, product for helping rejuvenate the hydrophobic properties of your ceramic coating. The the ceramic coating is like it's like the pores on your skin. Um, if you don't wash your skin for a long period of time, obviously they become clogged, and that's what happens with a ceramic coating. And what you're trying to do is rejuvenate and unblock those pores, like you do your skin. So using a fallout remover um, that will help um, remove any iron particles built up on the surface um, an acidic style shampoo that will help again remove any dirt and grime that's built up in that coating over time so yes i wouldn't typically go and put a wax on top of a ceramic cone the only thing that i would typically put on top of a ceramic cone is something to boost the hydrophobic properties like for example um Geon Ceramic Detailer, I use that as a drying aid on top of my ceramic coating and that really helps boost gloss and hydrophobic properties. But I know that underneath, if I was to do a decon wash, the, the, the hydrophobic properties would still be there because the, the all the beading and all the sheeting that you'd get from, from that ceramic coating is still there. So yes, um, they're the only products I would use on a ceramic coating. There's a question here that um, someone actually messaged me was, do I use a pre-wash or do I use a snow foam? This is a huge debate, I'm sure, in the detailing community, and everyone is going to have their opinion on this. And this is my, my opinion and what I've learned over the 15 years. Pre-wash, snow foam, two different products, and they can be very different in different manufacturers. Let's look at pre-wash, so a typical citrus pre-wash, a degreasing pre-wash, like the built hamber one. Um, I would, if we're talking winter time, I would cover the car in pre-wash, let it soak for a few, few minutes, and then I would rinse that pre-wash off to remove the worst of the dirt and the grime. Then I would then use a high alkaline Snow foam, so something like uh, Garage Therapy Decon Shampoo, Built Hamber Touchless, touchless uh, or Built Hamber Auto Foam, and that I'm gonna leave that, that then to cling on to the surface, and then that will remove the rest of the dirt. I did do a video on uh, snow foams. I'll leave the, the link up in the corner there. Um, so 
yes, pre-wash snow foam. Do I use them together? Yes. Do I use them on top of each other? No. I think you're masking the chemicals for both products. The, the, the pre-wash I'd use in a pump sprayer, I'd leave to dwell. I'd rinse that off to get the worst of the dirt off. And then once the, the I've gone round the car, I'd then apply the snow foam over the top and leave that to dwell for a few more minutes and then blast the rest of the dirt off. So that is the way I would do it. Um, there is many other people there that would do the pre-wash snow foam over the top. Uh, some people want to rinse the car off first, then apply their snow foam or their pre-wash. Whichever works for you, the way I've just said works for me, but everyone else is different. Obviously, I clean, I've cleaned in the in the past way more cars on the road out the back of my van um, than I have just my own personal car. My own personal car, again, depending, I don't really use it this time of year, so it doesn't really get that dirty. But I, I would go pre-wash, rinse, snow foam, rinse, then contact wash. So hopefully that clears that up for you guys. That's been absolutely real fun filming that for you guys today. I really appreciate all your support and every single one of you that commented below with all your Q and A's. Um, I will do another video very, very soon, but if you're new to the channel and you've enjoyed this one, don't forget to smash that subscribe button, hit that like button. And if you wanna see another video and you were really curious about garage therapy, click here. That's my garage therapy review and I'll see you guys in the next one.